Sure. People will start sensing the atmosphere. I said 35, 22 kilometers from the center of Mars. And it's going to start to slow down very, very slowly at first, but then faster and faster and faster till uh, to, to reaches about 7 Gs. I made that mistake on the video. It's actually 7 <laughs> Gs, not 12. Uh, and so it, it will, it, but we'll still very, very quickly slow down. And, uh, and, and from 15... In approximately one minute, inside is expected to reach its maximum heating rate. Oh, yes. Plasma blackout is possible during peak heating and could cause a temporary dropout of telemetry. This could last for as long as two minutes. Yeah, the, the gas that comes off the heat shield as it's slowing down, it looks like a meteor if you're on Mars watching the streak go by. That brightness of gas does interfere with the radio reception. And so it's possible that uh, Marco will lose that signal while it's going through this very hot entry. But not to be alarmed. Not to be alarmed. It's, it's part of the design. We, we, we completely expect it. Radio science reports plasma blackout as expected. Okay. Oh, wow. Ground stations have reported plasma blackout, still receiving insight telemetry via Marco. Marco Alpha has carrier interruption. Insight should now be experiencing the peak heating rate. Portions of the heat shield may reach nearly 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit as it protects the lander from the heating environment. That's hot. That's Marco it. Province has carrier interruption, but still in lock. Insight has passed through peak deceleration. Telemetry shows the spacecraft saw about 8 G. Marco Alpha and Marco Bravo maintain lock. Radio science reports carrier detected. Yeah. So, several different communications coming in. Insight is now traveling at a velocity of 2,000 meters per second. seems to have passed this very critical point of peak heating and peak deceleration. The next big step is parachute inflation. And you can see that on our timeline on the bottom of the screen. The next event is parachute deploy. Insight is now traveling at 1,000 meters per second. Very close. Once InSight slows to about 400 meters per second, it will deploy its 12-meter diameter supersonic parachute. The parachute will deploy nominally at about Mach 1.7. Standing by for parachute deploy. Radio science reports a sudden change in Doppler. Ground stations are observing signals consistent with parachute deploy. Marco Alpha, Marco Bravo, maintain lock status. Telemetry shows parachute deployment. Radar powered on. Heat shield separation commanded. This is really good news so far. It's fantastic. Uh, I'm on pins and needles. Yes. We have radar activation where the radar is beginning to search for the ground. Once the radar locks on the ground and inside is about one kilometer above the surface, the lander will separate from the back shell and begin terminal descent using its 12 descent engines.
Altitude Convergence, the radar has locked on the ground. Yes. Standing by for lander separation. Carrier interruption on Marco Alpha and Marco Bravo. Lander separation commanded. Yes. Altitude 600 meters. Gravity turn, altitude 400 meters. We're getting there. 300 meters. 200 meters. 80 meters. 60 meters. 50 meters, constant velocity. 37 meters. 30 meters. 20 meters. 17 meters, standing by for touchdown. Touchdown confirmed. Well, Bill, an exciting moment there. Touchdown confirmed. What more can you tell us about this? Well, it's just an amazing thing to see. You know, this is something that has to happen fully automatically. It takes eight minutes for commands to move from Mars to Earth and vice versa. No way to directly control this. The programming has to be perfect. The flight controller computer has to do everything by the book without any problems. And it did just that. The exciting thing was we got to sit here with a ringside seat. Listen to this telemetry as it got back to Earth, confirming that the inside lander had safely touched down on Mars. Quite a moment at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory. As you can imagine, this is not easy stuff to do. No. And they seem to have pulled it off. So, Bill, you're saying that everything is preset. There is no room for any manual last minute tweaking. No, no way at all. I mean, this was going to hit the atmosphere at this time, no matter what they did. And the spacecraft simply had to be able to deal with it. And of course, they practiced that. They planted in excruciating detail. But at the end of the day, it's all got to work. And apparently, it did just that. Quite a moment. Incredible. So uh, break that down for us. Is that all about the engineering? Is that what has to be so precise or is it more than just that? Oh, it's everything. It depends on the weather on Mars, the density of the atmosphere on landing day. You know, it's got 12 rocket thrusters that all have to work perfectly. They pulse on and off 10 times per second. It's got a radar altimeter that has to sense the ground, control that descent rate to get them on the ground at the right velocity, a supersonic parachute. I mean, the list just goes on and on and on. I mean, the heat shield up, up high in the atmosphere is experiencing nearly 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit to keep the thing cool enough to survive. It all worked like a dream, and it all happens in just six and a half minutes. It's, you know, if you think about it, these people have been planning this mission for six years or more, but it all comes down to this six and a half minutes to find out if it's going to work or not. And it did. I know. I'm so excited for them. I mean, six years of planning, panning out in six minutes. It's truly incredible. How much do the weather patterns on Mars play a, a role in this? Well, they certainly take it into consideration. They get weather reports from the Curiosity rover on Mars and from the orbiters around the planet. They upload that in a final set of uh, instructions to the spacecraft before entry even begins. Uh, so that 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 would that's one of the factors that makes a safe landing. But of course, all the engineering, as you mentioned, uh, that's what plays the major role. And all those systems work today uh, by the book, apparently. And so, Bill, now what? A perfect landing, as far as we know. What happens next? Well, hopefully we're going to get one picture fairly soon. And this won't be a spectacular picture, just a snapshot of the surface uh, to kind of show that that system is working. That could be delayed, but hopefully we'll get it. Uh, and then about 15 minutes, um, Later, after they let the dust settle down from those landing thrusters, they have to open up the InSight's two big solar arrays. Now, that's a critical milestone. They have to get the solar panels open to provide power to the spacecraft. So, you know, everybody's going to be a little nervous until that happens. Right. But then once all those systems are up and running, they begin this very, very long, tedious process to activate these instruments, to get them down on the surface so they can begin studying the interior of Mars. And that's going to take months. So we don't expect to sit science data back from the InSight lander until maybe even next spring. That's how long it's going to take. 
to get the instruments on the surface calibrated and ready to do their thing. Will the InSight lander ever make it back to Earth, or will oh, it stay no. there permanently and we'll just garner the information via what? Just, how is it sent yeah, through? We, is it sent by satellite signal? How do we get that information? Exactly. Uh, this thing is built so that it sends its telemetry up to one of the orbiting satellites that then send it back to Earth. But InSight is on Mars now for the duration. It won't be coming home. Uh, but the mission's expected to last two Earth years. That's one Mars year. And in that time, they hope to carry out the most extensive explorations of the interior of Mars that anyone's ever even attempted. And Bill, have we ruled out at this point, have scientists ruled out the possibility that there ever was life on Mars? Hang on a second. I'm sorry, Daniel. I'm distracted. There's a picture. You'll notice in that photograph all the speckles is dust on a protective lens cover. That'll come off later. But it shows that the camera's working. It shows the spacecraft is on Mars. And that's what got the flight controllers so excited right now. Fantastic.